July! What's good in the web? This is your boy Q back with some more of that geek news and after 4th of July, but I'm like a car dealership and that means my sales go on throughout the weekend. Now, we got more than a few topics to discuss today. Whew. So let's jump into it so we can beat this heat. Let me get this hat off. Now, if you're like me, you've been keeping up with My Hero Academia, and you've noticed something, because if I don't have to watch sub, I'm not going to watch sub, because I spend so much time looking at the bottom of the screen to read, that I feel like I'm missing some good quality H2O animation. Almost depending on the anime, I'll go back and rewatch, but that's not what we're talking about right here. On My Hero Academia, we've noticed something that's always missing, and that's the parents. On the last week's episode, we found mm, more than a few parents that serviced. And let me say, <clears throat> Mexica Bakugo, Bakugo Kachin's mom, is thick. Let me clarify it. Look at her. For an anime character, she is thick. On the same episode, one of the theories that I had talked about not too long ago is kind of surfacing and I mean Midoriya's mom ending up with All Might so if you don't believe me peep last episode and then read the subs and when they do the dub do the dub and you'll see exactly what I mean word on the web is Nintendo GameCube Mini so what is that going to be like the Mini Cube I'm just really interested in how big the Mini Cube is going to be because is it going to be like the size of a uh, like a a keychain or is it going to be the size of like a phone or like the GameCube was already small so how are they going to make this Mini even minier than the rest of the minis. Well, Nintendo filed a patent for some trademarks not too long ago. They had already done the same thing with a Nintendo 64 in May of this year. And it's been a little mm, issues on Nintendo's part with getting patents and getting everything with the Nintendo 64 ready, but that still doesn't stop Nintendo. Nintendo, as I just stated, has already started making trademarks and doing patents patent trademarks for the Nintendo GameCube Mini. The thing that excites me the most with the GameCube Mini is the fact, well, again, I want to see how small it's going to be, and I want to see exactly what games that they put out on the system. Even though I love the Super Nintendo more than I love the GameCube, the GameCube was probably going to be my next in line, well, if you don't want to count the Switch, because I'll probably say Super Nintendo, then I'll probably say... Switch, regular Nintendo, but I want to see some of those rare games that uh, we can't even get our hands on anymore, like Bait and Kados and uh, Tales of Symphonia. You know how many friends have I played Tales of Symphonia? How many people who haven't played it? Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. And I also want to see that Double Dash. That was one of my favorite GameCube games, and probably everybody else's. Not to mention whew, all the Zelda games, Custom Robo. And Mario Sunshine, I'm thinking that this is probably going to retail at around the same price, $79.99, around $89, depending because it's a little more graphical technology-wise they have to do with it. They might push $99, but I'm hoping that they won't because the other ones weren't $100. It's already said that Nintendo is showing up its Super Nintendo Mini and NES Mini for this holiday season. So maybe, just maybe, we might get a 64 for the holiday season, or even, or even, the GameCube Mini with 25 of our favorite games. By now, if you're a sports fan, a 2K player, a Madden player, a FIFA player, or if you can read English or watch TV, or you're on the internet, you already know that LeBron James has finally come to the Los Angeles Lakers. And that's a pill for me to swallow, I can't lie, because I've been a lifelong Lakers fan, and I just didn't want the dude on my squad. Actually, I really wanted DeMarcus Cousins, and speaking of DeMarcus Cousins, um, DeMarcus Cousins joined the Golden State Warriors. Oh, wow. They have an all-star team, and what the funny thing about this is, is they can now, with LeBron James in L.A., legitimately do a Monstars 
Space Jam Part 2 because... Everybody on this squad is an all-star. And if DeMarcus Cousins can come back before the all-star break and do at least 20 and 10 or close to the numbers that he was doing before, wow. Let's just take a look and see. DeMarcus Cousins had a 91 rating uh, last season on 2K. Uh, Clay Thompson had an 87 Draymond Green had like a between an 85 and an 87, always fluctuated. Steph Curry had a 94, 95, fluctuated. And KD had between a 95 and a 96 rating. These are all elite team building players that's going to be on one team. I'm going to let you know right now. If you play with this team against me on 2K, we ain't playing no more. And not only we ain't playing no more, if I do decide to play, I'm playing with this all-time Lakers team. With LeBron, with Kobe, with Magic, Kareem, and Shaq. I ain't messing with y'all. You crazy. I've been waiting for such a long time to watch this Dragon Ball Heroes that I can't lie because I needed that DBS Dragon Ball Super Fix and I was wondering what was going to go on and what kind of filler that Dragon Ball Heroes was going to be to well fill in until we got a main story arc and I'm sitting there popcorn in hand sparkling water waiting for me I don't mess with the soda no more and I'm sitting here thinking like whoo this is going to be 23 minutes of DBS enjoyment and it was only eight minutes and like 23 seconds i had to go back a couple times and make sure that i didn't just kind of mess up and go to the wrong site to watch it because it was only eight minutes and 23 seconds and what's even crazier about the whole situation this was the fastest i've ever seen anything dragon ball move even xenoverse and Xenoverse 2 don't move this fast. Not that that's a bad thing, but with only 8 minutes per episode, I'm wondering if this is going to carry on. Episodes that right in the beginning, Goku 4 from another dimension fights our Goku, and Vegeta's just sitting there watching, and he's not trying to do anything, and we find out that Fu from Dragon as Xenoverse is basically the person who's kind of orchestrating everything. I'm not going to get into too much, even though, believe it or not, like I said, for a Dragon Ball, this was a lot of jam-packed information in one episode. We've seen Trunks. We've seen the other dimension, Goku. Goku and Vegeta. We've seen Fu. And we've even seen this crazy Super Saiyan that's supposed to be evil on the prison planet. we even seen Cooler. So I'm wondering where they're going to go with this series. Because it seems like it has the possibility and the potential to be something. But at this rate... It's going so fast. I mean, well, damn. Um, we can have a whole season in five episodes. <laughs> so I'm wondering if this is going to last up until the Dragon Ball Super movie comes out. And is this just giving Akira Toriyama a chance to rest his fingers and his mind from writing Dragon Ball for a while? And are we going to get any word? on the more in the movie if the movie's going to be a continuation to dragon ball super i still want to see what goes down in um universe six and then i also want to see the saiyan planets in universe six or in other planets and i mean because we've we've never wished back the saiyans which i always wondered how come vegeta just never wished back the saiyans i mean he would be the king of the saiyans he's the most powerful you know, saying, well, him and Goku. I mean, all of their family are more powerful for everybody. I mean, Pan's probably more powerful than King Frieza. Uh, 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 more powerful than King Vegeta. Think about it. I consider myself a little bit of an impulsive person. A lot of times I do a lot of spontaneous things, whether it's going to concerts or movies or just events. I'll just decide, hey, I got the funds. I'll just do it. And one such event has been the anime expo that's in los angeles and you know what i'm like i'm in the area i'll go i got a little extra pocket change you know what either i buy a game or i go to the, the convention i might have a little funds to move around to do both but not with the tickets at 80 bucks at 80 dollars for an adult i have to say 
I'm just going to stack my cheese, rupees, and coins and wait till next year. I used to freak with the San Jose Fanime all the time when I lived in San Jose, but the Anime Expo actually shows up and shows out a lot more than that. And that's mainly because it's in one of the media capitals of the world. And it's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people who have been walking the streets of Los Angeles and in the convention center for over the last few days. People like For Never World are there, your favorite cosplayers, Crunchyroll, VRV, which I found out it's called Verb, but I like VRV better, and all of your favorite anime convention people are there. One of the things that's always surprised me about anime conventions and just geeked them in itself is the fact that just because you go to an anime convention doesn't mean you're only going to see anime cosplayers. You're going to actually see some video game cosplayers too. Matter of fact, Square Enix even has a booth as well as Capcom and anybody who has characters that somebody can dress up as. One of my personal dreams is to have my own personal characters that I've created be cosplayed at a, an event. So look out for me in 2036. And until then, just keep watching the videos. I still got something else to say. And our final news story of the day, Sega does it again. What do we mean? Is Sonic kissing on humans again? No, 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 no. It's not that bad, like that atrocity of Sonic 06. But it's kind of like that. Sega has decided to lease out Sonic in the new upcoming movie, which means that um, we're not going to get the creators of Sonic and the Sonic team to make this new movie. Now, that could be a gift or it could be a curse. And I'm leading toward the curse, mainly because let's look at all the rest of the Sonic things that's happened. Sonic with the chili dogs. Uh, that wasn't so great. I haven't got a chance to see the Sonic AM because a lot of people might be too young to have seen it. Watch that one. It will give you a whole new appreciation of Sonic the Hedgehog. I mean, because once Shadow and the Adventure and everybody else showed up, Shadow's Vegeta, Piccolo is Knuckles, Tails is Krillin, um, I guess you could say... Amy is like Chi Chi, except what she gets a little ragey sometimes. Of course, Goku and Sonic share these similarities. And think about when he gathers the rings, he turns into Super Sonic. I will admit that the Saturday morning cartoon that came out about what five, six years ago, um, that wasn't so bad. The one that incorporated where Sonic had like fell into the world and all this other stuff. Archie comic is still going on, I believe, and that's been close to 20 years. Sally has always been my favorite character from that series, and a lot of people don't like Sally because they feel she's um, a know-it-all and a princess and, you know, she can do everything. I forgot the word for it, a Mary Sue. I'd rather have a Mary Sue on my squad than an Amy Lou. And yeah, Amy, I'm talking to you. And well, this has been your boy Q, your friendly neighborhood geek. If you did like this video, please make sure you hit that like button. Woo! Sweat. It really helps me out a lot. And if you're new to my channel, and if you're new to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to stay up to date. Not only on video games, not only on entertainment, and not only on anime, but on all things geek. And until next week, it's going to be one, two, two days until I see y'all again. Peace.